Welcome back. This is part two of the continuation of chapter seven when we talk about lists and tuples. So where we left off was we're going to start talking about using the end when we deal with list. The end operator allows us to determine whether an item is contained in a list. So to do that, we're going to use a general format of item in list. It will return true if the item is in the list or false if it is not in the list. You can also use the not in operator to determine whether an item is not in a list. We can also append items to a list, and this is used to add items to a list. Um, it's appended to the end of the existing list. We can use index item used to determine where an item is located in a list. So as we were doing before, where we were using a specific index to get to an item in a list, this we can show an item and this index will tell us where that exists in the actual list. We can use insert. This is used to insert items at a position of the index in the list. This allows us to put items into the middle of a list. Sorting, or sort, is used to sort the elements in the list in ascending order. At times, we're going to want to remove items from a list, so we can use the remove and the item, and it will look through that list, looking for that item in the list, and then remove it. <coughs> as well as, we can use reverse, which reverses the order of the elements in the list. So this is something to think about. What if we want to sort our list in descending order? Well, couldn't we then just use sort and then use reverse? And then wouldn't we have something that's now in descending order? So here's some different uh, other methods, um, and some of them we've actually covered. And this is just kind of a list. So we've talked about a pin, and we've talked about index. We definitely have talked about insert, and that sort and remove, and then the reverse. Some list methods and useful built-in functions. This is a little bit more of these, and that is the DEL statement, which removes an item from a specific index in a list. So before, with the remove, we would specify the item with the DEL or short for delete. We actually are now using the actual index number. And then we have a min and max function, which is a built-in function that returns the items that has the lowest or highest value in the sequence. When it comes to copying lists, you can make a copy of a list. You must copy each element of the list two methods to do this. You can create this new list and then loop through that the old list, copying each element into the new list. You can also create a new empty list and concatenate the old list to the new empty list. Now understand that the way it works is you have to make sure your new list is empty. So that way, when you concatenate, you're all, only adding all the elements to the end of an empty list thus giving us our new list. <coughs> so here's an example of just what it would look like if you copy the list. Now what do we do when it comes to processing lists? You know, we can have list elements that are used in calculations. To calculate the total numeric values in a list, use a loop with an accumulator variable. We've kind of already done this in previous homeworks, where as we were sitting in a loop, we kept adding a certain number to our accumulator. Now, when it comes to averaging a numeric value, you calculate the total of the values using the accumulator process we just talked about, and then we divide that by the length of the list. <coughs> and then list can also be passed as an argument to other functions.
We can also return a list as a reference from the function. <coughs> so just like we've done before, where we made our own functions, we can pass a list as a parameter, as well as now we can return a list from the method, or excuse me, the function. To save the contents of a list to a file, we're going to use the write lines method, and we don't need to automatically write the end character, the new line character, each item. Or we can use a for loop to write each element, and then we do have to include the new line. And then to read data from a file, we can use the file object read lines method. List comprehensions. We'll talk, we'll talk about that in the next video. We'll see you then.